All right, so we now have Asteroid Belt 2.0, TNOs, KBOs, favorite acronym O's. And there's a lot of them. So what about Pluto? How, where does Pluto fit in? Is it the biggest? Is it small? Is it Well, Pluto unique? is the brightest. Yep. Because, um, of course, people discovered Pluto and they didn't find anything else like it for decades. You know, That's true. 70 years afterwards. But now with the more sensitive detectors, we're now seeing hundreds and thousands of these things. And it turns out that some of the other ones are actually every bit as big as Pluto. Um, this is Eris. Yep. Which is... Uh, and it's got its own moon, Dysnomia. And if we plot all these... <laughs> To scale, here's uh, Pluto with its big moon Charon, its whole bunch of small moons, and there's Eris with its moon Dysnomia, and you know they're pretty similar in size. Yeah, I mean we now know that Pluto is very marginally bigger than Eris, but for a long time Eris thought to be very marginally bigger, but they're pretty much the same. And and this is the Earth to scale and right? the moon, yeah. So, so these are still pretty small on the scale of yeah. things. And then there's Haumea and Maki Maki and a whole bunch of other ones. And you can see that uh, Pluto doesn't stand out that much. No, it really doesn't. Now, the reason why Eris wasn't spotted in the same surveys that discovered Pluto is, first of all, it doesn't happen to be in the same part of the sky where someone wrongly predicted yeah. it's not planet to be. <laughs> all right, that helps. But also, it's further out. Oh, and Not because that it... much further out, but because it's a little bit further out, it's actually much fainter. So even if it had been where Pluto was, you wouldn't have seen it. Yeah, because we were just seeing it's a really far drop off as you get it to those farther ranges. But there's a lot of things in a pretty big size. Um, so here's the brightness of these different things, and that's Pluto, that's um, Albion, the first one that was yep. spotted, um, and here's Eris. So definitely fainter than Pluto. But, but that's because it's further away. That's right. If it was the same distance as Pluto, it would be about as bright as Pluto, and yeah. would, have, would have probably been spotted back in the 1940s. And I mean, and, and I, th I think, you know, just so people appreciate this, we can see things in distant galaxies that are brighter the, the magnitudes and brightnesses of these objects. I mean, these things are faint. Very faint, yes. I mean, remember, zero is the brightest stars in the sky. Fifth magnitude is the faintest thing you can see with the human eye. So that's 100 times fainter than the human eye, 10,000, and so on. We're now talking about things that are millions yes. of times fainter than the human eye. And this, I think, is a great achievement of the people who build the instruments for astronomy. Yeah, oh, yeah. In every field of human device, we've got things better than humans. So we talk about the horsepower of a car and uh, the cars are a lot stronger than we are. A mechanical digger could easily be oh. a thousand times stronger than a human. But there are very few achievements where we're now talking, some of our best telescopes are now tens yeah, yeah. to hundreds of millions of times yes. fainter things they can see than the human eye can do. That's right. This is maybe the biggest extension of what the humans can do. And there also, there doesn't seem to be a limit. We're, as you were just talking about earlier, we're building bigger telescopes that will go even fainter and bigger cameras that will see even more and be more sensitive. So it's not like we're at the peak here. We can just keep going at this point. So it's getting harder and harder. It is. And I mean, once, your, once your detectors are 100% efficient, I mean, where do you go from that? You That's just have right. to go with a bigger telescope. Yes. Um, so in some ways, the golden age is, is going away. It used to be you kept the same telescope and just put better detectors on the end. But that's not going to work anymore. Detectors are already nearly perfect. And so now we need just bigger, bigger telescopes, telescopes, which cost money.